Having a good idea of our fixed and variable cost structures is important for forecasting total costs as a function of volume. It's also essential for understanding an important risk factor that goes overlooked by many managers. I'm talking about operating leverage. Imagine two companies. Let's call them old school and new school. Old school relies on fixed production capacity. They contract their employees on a salary basis and they own their own facilities. New school, on the other hand, takes advantage of the gig economy. Their employees are not on fixed salaries. When demand is up, their employees clock in and go to work. But when demand is down and the employees aren't making a lot of money, they go out. New School rents their facilities from a company that charges rent based on the square footage being used at the end of each month. This way, they can flex the warehouse and production capacity up and down depending on how busy they are. As you can see, Old School has a mostly fixed cost structure while New School has a highly variable cost structure. So which is better? Well, what if I told you that your chief economist thinks that the economy is about to take off? Would you rather have more fixed cost or more variable cost? Think about it per unit. If I sell one more unit, what's my marginal cost of making one more unit if I'm old school? Not much. You simply use the unused capacity that you have available. What about if you're new school? They need more labor. They may need more square feet where they can process the order. Let's say both companies sell their product for $100 a unit. Old school increases their revenues by 100 and their costs don't really change much. So they add nearly the full $100 of contribution margin to operating income. New school increases their revenues by the same 100 but their labor and overhead go up with the increased demand, meaning they make less than $100 of additional operating income on a net basis because their contribution margin is less than $100. What if the economy cools off? New school sends people home and shrinks the warehouse, lowering costs, but old school is stuck paying for idle capacity that they aren't using. New school's cost flex down with the lower sales volume, while old school's operating income might be hit pretty hard. Cost behavior exposes the firm to changes in the macroeconomy, so fixed costs are often a form of risk. They're like a teeter-totter or a seesaw. When things are going well, having more fixed costs is a blessing. But when things are falling apart, fixed costs are indeed a curse. In this example, you can see that old school's cost structure is riskier than new school's. How do you measure that? Well, look at the operating income for all three scenarios below. When things improve for old school, they really improve a lot. But when things go badly, old school begins losing money. New school may not make much in a recession, but they're not going to go bankrupt either. The same can't be said for old school. The degree of operating leverage is measured as contribution margin divided by operating income. We can use this to compare with other businesses to see how much risk we are comfortable with. I'm not saying that a company needs to have the lowest fixed costs or risk in their industry. At Ford, where we had more risk than General Motors, we used to say we don't have to be profitable in a recession. We just have to lose money slower than Chrysler because if they fail, we'll split their market share with GM and we'll continue to survive. Sorry if you've already heard that story like 12 times, but it's applicable a bunch of places. Financial leverage, or the amount of debt a company has, works the same way. So logically at Ford, we wanted to keep our degree of operating leverage and our degree of financial leverage just under that of Chrysler, but just over that of General Motors.